Welcome back to the Drawing Database, Professor Mark Leone. Today we're going to look at and spend 15 minutes or so with um, the drawings of El Greco. Uh, his full name is Dominikos Theotokopoulos, a Greek-born Spanish Mannerist painter in the Renaissance, born in 1541 and died in 1614. So in his work, we see generally an expressive type of looser mannerism, an elongation of the proportions, if you will, of the figure, very long, tall, thin figures, not unlike Pontormo in his mannerism, but a more Spanish style, a little bit more apocalyptic in his work and today as we look at the figure we'll just kind of keep uh, El Greco his mannerist style his borrowing from many different techniques and sources which made him unique in the Renaissance um, and mannerist part of the Renaissance we'll keep that all in mind and engaged so as we go through the drawings not a whole lot exists so I, I got what I could get from El Greco and what we see is a very controlled anatomical um, study with accurate scale and proportion and certainly some elongation of the figurative elements what we also see a very loose structured pen and ink kind of style here and then uh, washes heightened uh, washes with heightened with white chalk here at the end but we see a kind of broken line which mimics his painting style a little bit a very loose kind of fresh st um, studied approach here it could be from a statue or a from a live figure and reminds one perhaps maybe of Moses or some kind of authoritative figure perhaps even Christ uh, as well but an excellent example of El Greco's uh, drawing technique um, in addition to or uh, for his certainly his painting loose but controlled here we see a, a robed figure that's barely there. It's very wispy, uh, very wispily controlled. He might even have, might even have had laid in the figure with um, a a dry chalk, and then gone over that with some washes, and then heightened that in with the white chalk we see in through here. But we do see the light source emanating from relatively the top left, which leaves everything really from this point upward in light. And then everything here is kind of glossed over in shadow tone. Um, and it's very uh, easy to um, be economical here when you're working on the tone paper. Just a little line down here at the bottom to signify an ankle and a raised, slightly raised leg and foot onto some kind of structure. And then we see the detail. This is important to remember, and I tell my students this often in um, our figure drawing classes here at NKU at the university, especially when they're under a time limit for a class of two and a half or three hours, is remember this, is that the detail, the significant parts of detail of a drawing are in the light. We want to see the detail in the light. Even in this, in this particular case, we get more information into the light, a little bit of the hint of the beard, the cloth, etc., and allow the shadows to be much more simple and more as a theatrical, I think of it as a backdrop rather than uh, equal to the light. So the light helps, or is the, the key defi defining point in the dark around it helps to eliminate in light. They have their, their, um, their roles to play in a drawing. El Greco handles that, I think, quite, quite nicely. Here we see an El Greco here. Um, uh, drawing, uh, quick drawing in chalk, and here you get all of the mannerist approach from El Greco. You get the very elongated uh, male figure, right, very top heavy, and then you get the flowy, long, flowing gown down here uh, underneath looking down. Could be uh, Moses with the Ten Commandment tablet and the flowing robe, and then the tiny little feet to give an indication of where the form and figure ends and some shading to get to the figure, of course, up at the top here as well. And then you see it's graphed off. It was probably a drawing from observation, perhaps, and then graphed um, to get the scaling appropriate to a much larger canvas size. Of course, we see the much, much aged paper 
that El Greco had worked on and a little bit of an eagle here as well. But quintessential kind of um, iconic, if you will, El Greco, very elongated figure, flow and movement, and he picked up many different um, uh, attitudes or spirits, if you will, of art making by traveling in and out of Italy and picking up Italian uh, mannerism and bringing that to Spanish painting. Here you see uh, our final image with El Greco and a really lovely uh, ink study on paper heightened with a little bit of white chalk here. But just a lovely graphic and loose sketch of a, a figure, could be a Christ figure with some sort of cherub here at the top. But again, we're, we're um, slightly looking from below upwards to the model. We can see underneath the model's chin somewhat here with the head. So we see that going on. Um, and we get the really the lovely technique of the lay-in of El Greco, a very loose but yet confident approach to figuration that comes with maturity and some time um, or later on uh, somewhat in his uh, career. If we go in a little bit uh, deeper here and take a look at the graphic style of the drawing, again, what you'll see is what I've been talking about is just a fresh, um, conclusive looseness uh, suggestiveness here in the facial structure lit from the left and uh, right uh, in shadow very uh, simple delicate uh, delicate uh, shadow shapes filled slightly in with a hatch tone and then ink inside the shadow shapes very simply drawn but yet sophisticated in its overall effect I think what what we can learn as uh, students of the Renaissance draftsman technique and style is that we can get to a very complex reading of figures and figuration with an economy of means by suggestiveness, accuracy with form, composition, and a laying in of shadow shape and then filling that in, that tone in very simply and conclusively with, and with a little bit of light we get a very quick reading of the composition that we want with an economy of means. That's El Greco.